In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To God be glory and kingship for ever and ever. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. Welcome to our online worship for the second Sunday before Advent. We hear how Zephaniah prophesies the day of the Lord, a day of judgment and terror. Paul too writes of the day of the Lord, reassuring us that we are not destined for retribution, but for salvation. Jesus' parable of the talents warns us of judgment to come and of the need to use the gifts that God has given us wisely. Through word and sacrament, Christ is with us as we gather to worship. He will come to us to bless us and to heal us. When these things begin to take place, stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Turn to us again, O God our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near to those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray for the healing of creation. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Zephaniah. Silence before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. When that time comes, I shall search Jerusalem by an outright and punish the men stagnating over the remains of their wine, who say in their hearts, the Lord can do nothing, either good or bad. For this, their wealth will be looted and their houses laid in ruins. They will build houses, but not live in them. They will plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. The great day of the Lord is near, and coming with great speed. How bitter the sound of the day of the Lord, the day when the warrior shouts his cry of war. That day is a day of retribution, a day of distress and tribulation, a day of ruin 
and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of cloud and thick fog, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against fortified town and high cornered tower. I shall bring such distress on humanity that they will break their way like the blind for having sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like mud, yes, their corpses like dung. Nor will their silver or gold be able to save them. On the day of the Lord's anger, by the fire of his jealousy, he, the whole world, will be consumed, for he will destroy, yes, annihilate everyone living on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. About times and dates, brothers, there is no need to write to you, for you are well aware, in any case, that the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. It is when people are saying how quiet and peaceful it is that sudden destruction falls on them as suddenly as labour pains come on a pregnant woman, and there is no escape. But you brothers do not live in the dark, that the day should take you unawares like a thief. No, you are all children of light, and children of the day. We do not belong to the night, or to darkness, so we should not go on sleeping as everyone else does, but stay wide awake and sober, Night is the time for sleepers to sleep, and night's the time for drunkards to be drunk, but we belong to the day, and we should be sober. Let us put on faith and love for a breastplate, and the hope of salvation for a helmet. God destined us, not for his retribution, but to win salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that awake or asleep, we should still live united to him. So give encouragement to each other and keep strengthening one another as you do already. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. When the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, you yourselves will sit on twelve thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a man about to go abroad who summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one each in proportion to his ability. Then he set out on his journey. The man who had received the five talents probably went and traded with them and made five more. The man who had received two made two more in the same way. But the man who had received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now a long time afterwards, the master of those servants came back and went through his accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more. Sir, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. Here are five more that I have made. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have shown you are trustworthy in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join your master, master's happiness. Next, the man with the two talents came forward. So he said, you entrusted me with two talents. Here are two more that I have made. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have shown me my trustworthy in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come and join in your master's happiness. Last came forward the man who had the single talent. Sir, said he, I heard you were a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered. So I was afraid, 
and they went off and hid your talent in the ground. Here it is. It, is, it was yours, you have it back. But his master answered him, you wicked and lazy servant. So you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. Well then, you should have deposited my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have got my money back with interest. So now, take the talent from him, and give it to the man who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will be given more, and he will have more than enough. But anyone who has not will be deprived even of what he has. As for this good-for-nothing servant, Throw him into the darkness outside, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's interesting what different pictures of the day of the Lord, these three readings paint. For Zephaniah, one of the prophets that we don't read very often in church, um, it's a day of retribution, a day of violence, a day of terror, a day when God comes in anger and judgment to punish those who have failed him. It's not something to look forward to. It's not something to rejoice in. It's something to fear. And Zephaniah's message, of course, is all about, you know, about putting your house in order before the day of the Lord comes. Make sure that you're right with God before he comes, because if you're not, it will be a complete disaster for you. And he said it's coming soon. And it's coming with great speed. Paul, on the other hand, doesn't see the day of the Lord as a, as a day of retribution at all. At least, not for the Christians that he's writing to in Thessalonica. No, for Paul, the day of the Lord is a day of hope, a day full of joy, a day to long for. Because it will be the day on which Christians are justified and delivered and shown to be those who are on the right path, shown to be those who are saved. It will be, he says, a day of salvation for us. But, he says, don't get distracted by the world. Don't fall away or lose faith in the coming of this day. It will come, but you don't know when. So be ready at all times, because we are people of the light, he says, people of the day. The night is the time when people sleep. The night is the time when people get drunk. That must not be the way that we live. We must live in readiness and expectation and hope of the coming of the Lord. And if we do, then we will find salvation and the rejoicing will be great. And Jesus, in today's Gospel reading, takes a different approach again. It's not so much a parable about the Day of Judgment, but it's a parable about how to be ready for the Day of Judgment. Because the king who has gone away on a, on a long journey, and, and is away, according to this story, for, for a, a great deal of time, and returns at a time that's, well, unexpected, at least if you're unprepared. The king entrusts his servants with his property. And Jesus talks about the talents, and, and we, we use that word, talent, not as a, as, a, as, a, as a word that means a certain amount of money, a very large amount of money, in fact, but we use it of our, our abilities, our skills, our attributes, the thing that make us special. And so it becomes a story about, about using what God has given us, whether that be a gift as, a, as, a, as, a, as an 
artist or a gift as a musician or a gift as a public speaker or a gift as a carer or a gift as a prophet or a preacher or as a woodworker, a technician, an engineer. We use those gifts that God has given us for his glory so that we can hand back to him what we have produced in our lives, what is good, what is worthy, what is acceptable, can be offered to God. And the great sin here is for that story, that, that person in the story who, 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 first of all, when you read this, this parable, you feel a little sorry for, sorry for. We can understand his fear, his his master is, is, is not a patient man. He doesn't suffer fools gladly. He expects to get a return on whatever he does. And the good-for-nothing servant, as he's described, is afraid of what might happen if he loses the money and so buries it so that it can be returned. But what he's done wrong is he hasn't used it. And one gets the sense as you read this story and you, you, you try to understand it, that if he used it and said, I invested it in the stock exchange or I, I, I bought a load of goods and sold them, but I lost money and I've only got half a talent, that actually the master would say, but well done. You used the, the property, the gift, the talent that I had given you. And that using the gifts that God gives us, using the talents, the abilities, the gifts, the skills that God gives us for his glory and for the good of his people, is what God requires of us. Not that we do nothing, that we do something, that we do something that makes our world a better place, that makes the lives of our neighbours better and more joyful, that we use what we have for the good of those around us. And again, rather like last week, when we recalled that parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus here seems to be saying, well done, good and faithful servant. What you did for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did for me. It all fits together. These parables of Jesus about being ready for that judgment are all about what we do. what we attempt, not necessarily what we achieve. It's about doing the right thing, behaving in the right way, trying to make a difference to do good. And we'll fail sometimes, but other times we'll gloriously succeed. And the words of promise from Jesus are not words about what you achieve when he praises us, but they're about what we tried to do, how we approached life. And that poor unfortunate servant who was thrown out into the darkness where they'll be weeping and grinding their teeth was punished not because he failed, because he didn't try. And Jesus calls us to be people who try to make a difference. And in that way, are ready for him when he comes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Jesus, our exalted Lord, has been given all authority. Let us seek his intercession, that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for your Church, your broken body in the world. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the Majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to your glory through your death and resurrection. Pray for all who are dying that they may trust in your promises. Jesus Christ, Lord of all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe. Pray for us who receive the gifts you give us.
for work in your service. Jesus Christ, first fruits of the new creation, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace until you bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the God of peace sanctify you. May he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before him at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with his saints. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Hosanna in the highest. 
Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Jesus' breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as Thanks be to God. 